Do your car keys like to play hide and seek? Try this trick. Alexa, turn on the car key beeper. Listen, follow the beeps. Okay. Sounds like coming from over yonder. Or specifically, I think the doggy toy box. Now, to be fair, I can't really blame the poor doggy on this. It's probably rather one of these rubber duckies. So, this blinking little device. This is, this is the topic of today's video. It's a little $30 engineering marvel from a company called wirelesstag.net. So in past videos I've demoed how to monitor things using uh, Arduinos and Raspberry Pis. For example, in the corner here, on top of this Sonos, I have a Raspberry Pi whose primary purpose is to act as a distributed speaker system so our smart house can talk to us. But I also added this little $10 sensor so it can sense temperature and humidity. But if all you want to do is sense motion or temperature and humidity, this is kind of bulky. Plus, you have to plug it in for power. This guy, on the other hand, is small, battery powered, can easily go just about anywhere. For example, I have a waterproof version down here, hiding out in the shade. He's monitoring our outdoor temperature and humidity. And over here, I have another waterproof one. It also has a light sensor built in. He's hiding out in the sun, so he can monitor how much sun we get various times of the year, various times of the day, to see if um, solar panels make economic sense. I have yet another one down here in our crawl space, because in Alabama, occasionally, it can freeze. So, down here next to this sound isolated aquarium air pump, which feeds our aquarium up there, I have this sensor whose job is to tell us if the pipes down here will, uh, will freeze or not. That allowed me to unplug some very power inefficient heat tape and uh, still have peace of mind. Because you can program those guys independent of your home automation server using their cloud-based software to tell you whenever they're monitoring, like temperature, it goes out of bounds, like freezing. And that can send messages to your phone or email or to your home automation server. All of these tags have tilt sensors built into them so they can detect motion or when the sensor's been tilted by more than X degrees, or you said X. That, that sensor, however, is a full measure. If your event occurs within one or two seconds, the sensor might miss it. They do sell a sensor that has a vibration sensor, an additional sensor built in to sense vibration, and that's detected immediately. So a few videos back I showed you how we put a Z-Wave sensor in our mailbox so we could detect when the mail came, because it would vibrate. But I had some sensitivity issues be due to big trucks rumbling up and down this hill. So I replaced it with this uh, wireless tag sensor, which allows for a better sensitivity control than the Z-Wave ones did. It's, and it has adequate range, it can go from here to where we have our antenna mounted. I'll show you that in a minute, up there in the corner. Um, which is pretty good considering there's also a mailbox in between. The last tag I'm going to show replaces that tilt sensor with an infrared motion sensor. So that triggers two things. That little loon sound you just heard upstairs and these LED light strips that light up our stairway at night so we don't trip. That Loon sound, by the way, is kind of like uh, trying to simulate the squeaky stairs that you used to have in older houses. Kind of fun way of detecting motion. Um, so all of these uh, sensors can be programmed with your phone or tablet or web interface, which is what I'll show you next. So this is the web interface. It shows all seven sensors that I have. For example, here's the mailbox one showing you temperature, humidity, open close status when it was updated, what the signal strength is, what the battery level is. You can look at the graphs for just this device. This shows when it was open or closed for the last six days. And you can also look at the temperature and humidity for just this device. You can also look at the temperature and humidity for all seven devices all at once. Using this chart, that's for the last 24 hours. Here's the last week, here's the last 30 days. 
you can zoom in like so and you can use the uh, shift key and pan like so. All of this comes as a free service. They make a note of their fact that this is likely to stay free because it costs them very little. Server times are inexpensive and the data volume is pretty low. So I'll show you how you control the motion control sensitivities. Um, here's the sensitivity options. Um, here's the angle uh, of the tilt sensor you want to trigger on. Here's what it'll do when it does trigger. Uh, you can have it send a push notification to one or more phones. Uh, you can have it speak on the phone what the event was. You can use if this then that. Probably the most flexible option is over here, something that they call URL calling. That allows you to call any server. For example, here's the internal IP address of my home automation server and pass it whatever data you want. For this data, I'm passing the tag name, the temperature, humidity, and brightness level. And this routine on my home automation server will parse that and store it in my home automation database. Um, here's another example. Uh, when the door, the mailbox open is open or closed, uh, it will call a, a different routine to set a variable that says the mailbox was just open or closed. And when it's closed, as just another example, we have it actually call a routine that speaks the mailbox was closed. Now the nice thing that they allow here is, is when you click this option, it'll say this URL is using an internal private IP address, which means you don't have to rely on an external address so that this will still work independent of the cloud. The internet goes down. Um, this is all within your intranet, so it's not dependent on that. So one of the disadvantages of this wireless tag setup is it requires yet another proprietary Ethernet connected hub. Um, now you can kind of excuse that because they're getting up to 700 feet of range on a coin operated battery that they claim will last up to four years. So that's impressive. You wouldn't expect that out of any of the other wireless protocols like Bluetooth or Z-Wave or Zigbee. So um, the other, and it's not so painful because the device, the interface, which I have sitting over here in the corner, so it can get good range to our mailbox, is um, just a $50 device. So pretty inexpensive. I have it hooked up to the Eero port of the, of the port of the Eero router. So to summarize, I like these tanks. Very accurate temperature monitoring, less than tenth of a degree Fahrenheit. Uh, some of these versions have data buffers built in, so they can monitor data even when they're offline. Say you're monitoring produce as you truck across country. Um, a couple sensors I don't have, a moisture, temperature, uh, moisture sensor and a read relay sensor. And they have Alexa integration built in. I'll close out with an interactive example of that. Alexa, ask wireless tag. You can ask questions like, what is the temperature in living room? If you have a tag named living room, and so on. Now, what do so, you want to know? What is the temperature in the crawl space? Crawl is 63.9 degrees Fahrenheit four minutes ago. Not much freeze danger today in February. That's, that's Alabama. <laughs> okay, that's it for this month. See you next month.